<clears throat> Chair Granzilla, should we call roll? Yes, I was just about to ask Kayla. I was going to wait for the remarkable hour of uh, eleven ten, and uh, Kayla. Um, oh, actually, Frank has an excused absence. Uh, Rodney Cobos is back on. David Delator, are you back on the call? Yes. Thank you. Miguel is back. Don is back. Diana Love. I'm here. Good. Thank you. Michael Mark. Here. Steve Pinelli. Here. Cindy. Here. Thank you. James Ruain. Here. Johnny. I'm here. And Mary Tyker. Here. Very good. Thank you. So we now turn to the executive portion of the meeting and uh, what we will do next is to review and possible approval of the September 22nd and 23rd 20, 2021 meeting minutes, <clears throat> which begin on page 87 of your packet. Did any board members have any corrections to the minutes? I would make a motion to approve. This is Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Ruane, second. I'll second. Oh, I think Mr. Ruane was first on there. So thank you very much, Johnny, making the motion and Mr. Ruane seconded in motion. And <clears throat> um, are there any comments from board members? Shelley, is there any public comment? I'm not seeing any hand raises at this time, nor requests for comment through the Q&A or the chat. Thank you so much. Kayla, please call the roll. Hey, Susan Grinzella. Yes. Rodney Cobos. Aye. David De La Torre. He's, are you muted? Okay, we'll pass that one. Miguel Galarza. Here. Don Garitano. Yes. Diana Love. Aye. Michael Mark. Aye. Steve Pinelli. I wasn't at the meeting. Should I still vote? You could abstain. I'll abstain. Cindy Rich. Abstain. James Rain. Aye. Johnny Simpson. Aye. Mary Tyker. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Good. Thank you, Kayla. Next, we will review and possibly approve the September 29th board meeting minutes, which begin on page 111. Motion to approve. This is Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. And do I have a second? I'll second. Yeah, I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Diana, love for the second on that one. Is that, did I hear correctly? Yes. Good. Any comment uh, from board members? Shelley, is there any public comment? I am not seeing any requests for comment at this time. All right. Kayla, please call the roll. Susan Granzella. Aye. Rodney Cobos. Aye. David De La Torre. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Miguel Galarza. Aye. Don Garitano. Yes. Diana Love. Aye. Michael Mark. Aye. Steve Pinelli. Abstain. Cindy Rich. Abstain. James Rain. Aye. Johnny Simpson. Aye. And Mary Tyker. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Next is the registrar's uh, report, which includes an update on the tentative board meeting schedule and fee changes that will take effect with the start of the next year. David, I give the floor to you. Well, thank you, Chair Granzala. As we discussed earlier in the meeting, we will need to have a legislative committee meeting 
around the middle of February. The licensing committee chair, uh, shares the same board members as the ledge committee. So might be an opportunity for them to meet as well. One thing I was thinking of is in a few minutes, you'll discuss the strategic plan and the strategic plan will need to have uh, uh, dates or implementation dates. And also uh, we'll need the board uh, board members direction on how to move forward on the strategic plan objectives. I mentioned that because it might be uh, very worthwhile if all of the committees were to meet around the middle of February. So we can only address the uh, regulatory rulemaking language for the BESS, but also the strategic plan objectives. The next board full board meeting, again, as we discussed earlier in the meeting, will be, uh, we'll have Kayla send out a, a doodle poll, survey all of you to see if you want to have that meeting virtual or in person. Uh, we'll be looking at March 28th to 30, 31st for the next quarterly board meeting. And I did want to mention that uh, the last 12 years, we've met with the Nevada board members. That meeting is generally in June. They are interested in having an in-person meeting with us uh, next June, June of 2022. So that would be the tentative board meeting schedule. I don't know if there's any, any comments regarding that or any thoughts. If, if not, then I will move to the... Uh, so. Chair's pleasure. I'll move to the January 1st, 2022 fee changes. I just wanted to provide the board a quick update. Uh, we did send out an industry bulletin to let our licensees know that fees will be increasing. When that bulletin was released and what appears on the website includes the language that you see in your board packet. And that language is on page 119, but it also includes the fee increases. And as you'll see in the bullets, and we want to make it clear that we don't want to have, we're trying to avoid any type of hurdles to enabling uh, qualified persons to obtain a license. So the fee increase does not relate to the sole owner renewal, but it does relate to other renewals. I, I do want to report that we only received a handful of comments after that industry bulletin was released. And the majority of those comments uh, simply stated that while you know, they understand the need for the fee increase. They would really like to see more enforcement of licensing requirements that you know, while they have to pay an increased license fee, they'd like to see the board uh, uh, perhaps direct staff or, or re-strategize how to address unlicensed practice. And I would just close by saying that is a strategic objective that you'll be um, considering this morning. So thank you. And I did want to add that this year we met with Nevada in September due to the year, the COVID. <clears throat> Generally, for the for the last ten years, it it all has always been in June. So, planning for that, um, we'll take that into account with the doodle and uh, the scheduling of the meetings between now and the end of March. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the review discussion and possible. Chair Granzella, is there any public comment on this item? Thank you. Is there any public co comment on this item? I am not seeing any hand raises and no requests for comment through the Q and A or chat. All right. Thank you. So the next item is review discussion and possible action to adopt the board's 2022 through 2024 strategic plan. A draft of the strategic plan starts on page 123. And since our September 22nd planning session, the Department of Consumer Affairs Solid Training and Planning Solutions Office and our staff have worked to prepare the draft report that is in the board packet for your review. Shelly, our moderator today, was an instrumental part of the team that walked us through the process from start to finish. Uh, we were um, designing, we were creating these strategic plans, not merely just moving them from prior years. I want to take a moment to say thank you to Shelly, even though she was not there in person, it was her staff and it was also her team and effort, all the work she put into interviewing individual board members as well. So Shelly, we really appreciate the work you and your team did. 
during this process, surveying members, staff, stakeholders, facilitating our discussions and writing this report. We really appreciate it. And Shelley, are there any comments that you'd like to make to the board before we start going through it? Uh, thank you. And I will share your words with my team. Um, not that I can think of, just know that um, once the plan is approved, then it can be adopted and published. And if there's any edits to it, we can certainly make those as well. Okay, good. So I, I'd like our discussion in the next few minutes to be taken in phases. We will start with the introductory material first and then teach take um, each of our five goal areas in turn. And for those of you who are new to the board, this was a group effort, several hours spent after our meeting in September and uh, individual groups of board members uh, refined, agreed, uh, discussed all of these. So it was very interesting. Um, I do wanna clarify that the strategic, strategic plan page on uh, 125 is incorrect. And it was caught, let's see, it says 2022 through 2025 strategic plan, and that should read 2024, it's a three year plan. <clears throat> and I will now draw your attention to the C CSLB mission on page 130 uh, on, in your board packet. And at the last meeting, uh, Board member Diana Love asked if we can make an alteration to our mission. I've asked her to briefly, briefly speak with the board on her recommendation. <clears throat> Thank you, Diana, for participating in this. Um, would you like to present your ideas on um, enhancing, I should say, our mission statement? Good morning, and thank you for allowing me to address the board. The reason that I wanted to add behind the word construction, including home improvement, is because we have contractors who do more than just construction. We have residential remodeling. We have contractors who do painting, plumbing, all sorts of things that um, to make improvements to consumers' home. So I think that it's appropriate to add the word including home improvement. And as I was reading down a little bit further, the first paragraph under that, which says the board accomplishes this by, and where it says ensuring that construction is performed in a safe, competent, and professional manner, I would also suggest that we say ensuring that construction and including home improvement is performed in a safe, competent, and professional manner as well. Thank you for allowing me to address you. Thank you. <clears throat> And uh, thank you, Diana, for that idea of adding that. Do any board members have any other comments on the introductory material on page 128 through 137? I know it, it, it was a very interesting reading um, because I don't think we've gone about this in this manner. So I thought it was clear and it was all, all very interesting discussions we had back there. So do any board members have comments on that? I'll ask again, seeing none. Um, Shelley, is there any public comment on the introductory material in the report? I am not seeing any requests for comment at this time. Okay, great. <clears throat> Members, we're now turning to the goal portion of the report. As we discuss these areas today, please keep in mind that this document will serve as a guide to staff in the next few years, telling them what we expect to see from their work. The appropriate committees will establish the objective target dates. So the, all of these will be assigned to committees and provide oversight to monitor staff's compliance with the objectives. So we now move to goal number one, and that would be licensing and testing. Do any board members, um, do you have any comments on goal number one? And what, what we'll do is this, we're going to go through and ask for comments on each of the five goals. We have some hints and then we will vote at the end. So do any members have comments on goal number one? licensing and testing. 
All right. And any public member comments on goal number one, Shelley? Not seeing any at this time. Moving to goal number two, the enforcement area on page 139. Do any board members have comments on goal number two? Yes, Chair uh, Grenzella. Mm -hmm. uh, just an item um, for a possible correction on item 2.2, like a suggestion of a grammatical correction, uh, research and the scope. It may be uh, better written as research the scope. Yes. Thank you. Good, thank you. Are there any public comments on goal number two, enforcement? Not seeing any at this time. So there you go, Susan. This yes. I have a quick question. So we talked a little bit on 2.5 about the public works unit. I guess I wanna make sure, I don't necessarily know that, um, we talked about whether we're the right agency to do that or whether there's other public works agencies. And I wonder if the establishing a public works unit is a defined goal or if it is starts with understanding what awarding agencies and public works investigations are currently going on on and supplementing as needed but having a goal to establish a unit i wonder if we really got that far i understand so that would be a uh, we will have other suggested changes which we will authorize staff to make if we agree with those changes so we that would be another 2.5 would be um, to rephrase to, to um, research um, the need to establish or something along those lines, research the need to establish or the possibility of establishing a public works unit, something. Okay. Yep, thank you. Okay, very good, thank you. Is there any other board comment? Okay, and, and Shelley, any public comments on that? Um, none at this time. All right. So now we will go on to goal number three, legislation. Do any board members have any comments on goal number three, legislation? And Shelley, are there any public comments? No hand raises and no requests in the Q&A or chat. Thank you, Shelley. Moving on to goal number four, public affairs. Are there any board comments on goal number four? And seeing or hearing none, we will uh, ask Shelley again. It, would it be, uh, are there any comments from the public on goal number four? Not seeing any requests at this time. All right, good. Our last goal is number five, the executive administration and information <clears throat> information technology. And um, I, our new board member, Cindy Rich, uh, obviously read uh, through the uh, strategic goals and made a suggestion. Uh, and it's, it's a very interesting suggestion because it's something that we have known or just understood over the years, but it probably is, it's an excellent idea to have it um, added as a goal so that it can be communicated. And that would be identify, establish, and report to the board. This would be for the, for the registrar or deputy. Uh, identify, establish, and report to the board on strategic alliances with consumer industry and state agency partners to further CSLB's consumer protection goals. And over the years, uh, it's always been a part of the reporting, but I think um, we could uh, add that as a goal. So here's what uh, has we've been advised. So do any board members have comments on goal number five? Yeah. Shelley, is there any public comment on goal number five? I am not seeing any requests at this time. Okay, that wraps up our goal areas. Do, it, do board members have any comment on any other item that we've not discussed in the report? 
No. All right. So we're now going to ask for a motion, but I members at this time, I'm happy to entertain a motion to adopt the report as we discussed today. But as we've done in the past, we can choose to have the staff update the report to include the changes that we've discussed today and present that update at our next meeting. So the possible motion motion is the board accepts the report presented today with the alterations that were discussed and delegates of the registrar to make all changes to the report as discussed and publish the report on behalf of the board at its 2022-2024 strategic plan. So can I have a motion uh, to, uh, for this to accept the report and allow staff to, Dave to direct staff to make the changes we discussed today. Mr. Chair, this is Jim Ruane, so moved. Thank you. This is Diana, I second. Thank you, very good, thank you so much. And um, are there any comments from the board members? <clears throat> Shelley? I'd like, to say, I'd like to say a couple of things about the particular objectives, if I could. This is Cindy Rich. Mm -hmm. So one of the first documents that I read on coming onto the board was your previous strategic plan, 2019 to 2021. And I've had in my business career, my 20 year business career, I've worked within the strategic planning arena um, in, in the various um, re job responsibilities that I've had at the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce and, and most recently at the University of California Davis Graduate School of Management. And so when I read the 2019 to 21 strategic plan, I was really pleased to see that the objectives were very clear. They were quantifiable where they could be. They did not use governmental jargon. They did not use construction jargon. They, for me as a reader coming out from outside of the arena, I was able to quickly get a grasp of what the guidelines are in terms of strategic planning objectives for the CSLB. Then last week, when I received the board packet and went through the same packet of objectives, um, I didn't feel like the, situa the situation seems to have changed. And it made me wonder, since I wasn't part of the process for either last time or even this time, if the, the language of the individual objectives seemed much more ambiguous to me. There was much less clarity for me. There was a um, um, tendency to use language that was that is um, not as user friendly for those outside of the arena who might be trying to understand what the board is saying in their strategic planning document. And consequently, I, I feel uncomfortable about the adoption of the strategic plan as such. And at the same time, I recognize that we may be at the 11th hour needing to get this adopted for 2022. And I'm just wondering, is there any wiggle room, if you will, to begin to, to, to kind of review and evaluate some of the language in terms of its lack of clarity and, their, and its um, uh, inability to really quantify mm -hmm. as the previous strategic right. plan did the objectives. So, um, and I apologize really for coming at this at the 11th hour, but just felt like I needed to voice my concerns. Well, very good. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it, it is one of those things. This was the first draft rather than take the strategic 
um, plans that we had in the past and somehow adapting them to the present or future. Um, we started from scratch and it was really an exercise in people just having all these ideas. So I don't think the same clarity came through on the objective, but the thought, the process, the background and the concerns were still there. Please know that these are reviewed. Um, don't do anything, tell Justin. Oh, um, please know that these are reviewed uh, by the uh, individual committees uh, at, on a regular basis and the strategic plans, both the uh, target dates and the language, the language has to be changed um, as we adapt. So uh, it, we often present to the board, we are changing the, the language in three of the strategic plans and we move the dates and here's why. And the bo board will vote on it. So we really started from scratch, but it, it was a great effort uh, with Shelley's staff, but this w definitely will be improved, reviewed and morphed um, as we go through each year. So I hope that helps. I hope. Okay. Um, so that is, uh, let's see now, that wraps up our goal areas. We've asked for a motion, and that was the motion for the board members. Shelly, Cindy, did you hear my response? I hope that was okay. Yes. Do you have any questions? Yes. Okay. No. Happy to, you know, if you comment on something like that clarity, we just may put you on that committee, you know? So anyway, Shelly, is there any public comment um, on this? I am not seeing any hand raises nor requests for comment at this time. All right, that would be the motion on the strategic plan and um, we will have the motion. And Caleb, please call the roll. Susan Granzella. Aye. Rodney Kobos. Aye. David De La Torre? Aye. Gal Galarza? Aye. Donald Garitano? Aye. Diana Love? Aye. Michael Mark? Aye. Steve Pinelli? Aye. Cindy Rich? Aye. James Ruane? Aye. Johnny Simpson? Aye. Mary Tykert? Mary? Sorry, I'm Thank you. A uh, motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, next turn information technology update, and that is on page 145. Information starting on one, page 147. And Jason, please update the board. Thank you, board chair, and good morning, everyone. On page 147 begins the information technology update. First, I would like to highlight that CSOB is still processing over 40% of our license renewals online. We are hopeful that this average will continue to grow as we have just made additional modifications to the online renewal. This allowed additional business entities with a single qualifier to renew online. The second phase was released in the beginning of October, which will provide 96% of our current licensees the opportunity to renew online. As you can see at the chart at the bottom of the page, we also continue to see monthly increases with our online citation payment application. I would like to show my appreciation and the IT division's appreciation to the enforcement division for a seamless transition for adding online transactions into their processes. As we move further into our IT project calendar, we are currently preparing for the CSLB fee increase implementation. This is scheduled for January 1st. The IT division has made mo um, multiple modifications to renewal notices, updated CSLB forms, and also to our internal CSLB processes, all in preparation for January 1st. Once this project is completed, additional IT resources will then be dedicated to the exam administration transition to PSI. This is still scheduled for an implementation of spring of next year, 2022. This will, this will conclude the information technology update. I am available if the board has any questions. 
actually, I do have a question, Jason. When you, uh, on the online citation payment, I'm not connecting what uh, the enforcement division, what, what, how did they work with IT to um, roll this program out? I mean, were they informing those who had not paid that they could pay online or what did enforcement do to work with IT? Correct. This was a public information and this is the uh, assistance with the enforcement division as we moved our citations online for on online payment. They were uh, publicly addressing this with uh, with this uh, the licensees or the applicants. Great. Progress. Thank you. Are there any comments from board members? And Shelley, would there be any public comment on IT? Not seeing any requests at this time. All right, as there is no action required of the board, we move on to our next agenda item. And that would be also another favorite subject, budget update and statistical summary. Uh, we are going to ask Stacy Paul to provide her update. Thank you, board chair, and good morning, or almost afternoon, everyone. Um, on page 151 begins the budget update. The first chart shows our fiscal year 2021-22 budget and expenditures through August. Nothing too exciting. In fact, we've spent slightly under what we uh, what is expected to spend at 15% of our budget authority. This should keep us on track to spend about 68 million of our authorized $73 million budget. The chart directly below shows our revenue for the first quarter. You can see that overall we have exceeded prior year revenue by 6.2%. The biggest change I want to point out is compared to prior year is within the new license and application fees, you'll see that we're seeing a 15% Point four percent increase over prior year. This is mainly due to licensing dwindling down the backlog of new exam applicants that were delayed due to COVID. If you flip the page, page 152 is our fund condition, and this projects out to 2223. The middle column is current year, and you can see at the beginning of the fiscal year, we started with 3.7 million in reserves. Due to the passing of the fee bill, SB 607, which goes into effect January 2022, we project to bring in an additional 7.5 million, resulting in a total of 70, 78 million for the year in revenue. Directly below that is our board expenses and external costs, which we are projecting to spend 74 million this year. Ultimately, increasing our reserve by year end to 7.7 .7 million. Then if you look at the last column, which is next year, you can see we should end the year with a healthy two month in reserve. On the next page, this, this chart shows the board approved 5 million in expense reductions. The column on the right in blue reflects the savings in each area that has been identified. As you can see, we've almost um, met, almost 1 million in savings has already been realized this year. Lastly, let me quickly touch on the statistical summary details on the next two pages. Um, no big surprises for the first quarter of the year compared to last year. We are, we are seeing an increase in new applications and the issuance of new licenses. Um, and it's still early to tell about renewals, but since this is typically a non-peak year, we're seeing a slight decline um, of 2% over compared to last two years ago. This concludes the budget update, unless anyone has any questions. Do any board members have questions on Stacy's presentation? Well, I have to say, since we worked on this in the middle of COVID, um, projected re reserves looking good at 2.2 is a huge effort uh, that everyone put into effect you dave everyone um and that is it's great news you know i think it's so important i agree we never went into the red so i mean hopefully we will continue to stay there oh that's wonderful thank you thank you so are there i any do just want 
Yeah, Susan, this is Johnny. I do just wanted to comment. Great job, man. That's uh, everything sort of happened just the way you said it was going to. So appreciate that very much. Thank you. Great work. Thank you, Johnny. I think this all started back when you were board chair. So we were we were dealing with this quite a few years back. <laughs> Thank you. His legacy. All right. Uh, are there any other questions from board members? Is there any uh, public comment, Shelley? Not seeing any hand raises or requests in the Q and A or chat. All right, good. Thank you. And um, next is the administration program update, which begins on page one fifty seven. And uh, Mike Maliza, could you update the board, please? Yes, thank you, Chair Danzella. Good morning, members of the board. I'll direct you to page one fifty nine of your uh, board packet. I'll begin with the administration update and I'll start with the uh, uh, activities in our personnel unit. Uh, as far as transactions during the first quarter of fiscal year 2021-22, uh, CSLB personnel staff completed 35 personnel transactions. This included the addition of five new employees from other state agencies, three employees that are brand new to state service, and within CSLB, three employees were promoted and seven transferred to different positions. In addition, Eight examination proctors and one student assistant were hired and four employees accepted training and development uh, assignments. You can see on the table that follows that the total number of uh, personal transactions per quarter. On the following page on page 160, I'll cover the vacancies. Uh, CSLB averaged 46 vacancies during the first quarter of fiscal year 2021. The personnel unit continuously works uh, with CSLB hiring managers and the Department of Consumer Affairs Office of Human Resources to identify and minimize any delays in recruitment for key positions. I'll bring you down to the bottom of that page. Um, we'll talk about COVID-19. The personnel unit assisted employees affected by the COVID-19 pandemic with benefits made available under federal and state legislation. In 2020, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act provided benefits under the Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act and the Emergency Family and Medical Leave Act uh, for eligible employees experiencing a loss of time uh, due to COVID. Uh, and then we'll go to page 161, next page. We'll talk about telework. It's been a big part of our environment here at CSOB. So COVID-19 drastically changed the workplace uh, here at CSOB. Teleworking was encouraged to reduce the spread of the virus and safeguards were put into place that include social distancing, the use of face covering in the office, and hand washing guidelines and self screening. So working from home, staff did adapt quickly and efficiently to change and, and to keep the CSLB's mission critical services running. Uh, those duties required in, per, in person attendance performed their work safely following state guidelines. That transition to the telework environment did come with some challenges. Uh, we're focused on the level of production and this level of service to the public. CSLB worked with managers, supervisors, and staff uh, working groups to identify ways to provide better guidelines uh, and assistance to staff and better tools to supervisors and managers to manage the workload. So, uh, you know, even though it brought some challenges, uh, it provided CSLB opportunities to rethink how it uh, transforms its delivery of services and how it can quickly adapt to better service the needs of licensees and con consumer protection. So what didn't change uh, during the pandemic was CSLB's commitment to Californians uh, throughout more than a year of the pandem pandemic related challenges. CSLB continues to keep the focus on consumers, licensees, and ultimately all Californians. Uh, we'll direct you to page 163. Uh, that continues the admin update. All the highlights for the business services unit there regarding facilities, contracts and process, procurements is, um, process, executed contracts, and on the following page, uh, fleet, uh, we were uh, able to uh, add some vehicles to our fleet um, this year and training. So that concludes my administration uh, division update. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Do we have any comments or questions from board members? And Shelly again, are there, is there any public comment? I am not seeing any requests at this time. All right. Well, 1149. 
Um, this concludes our board business for today. Uh, can I get, please get a motion to adjourn the board meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Dave, Dave De La Torre and second was? Rodney Cobos. Rodney. All right, roll call is not needed. So therefore this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank Great you. Great holidays. Happy holidays. Yes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks, Susan. Thanks. Take Thanks, care. Everyone.